So in 2020, during COVID, I ended up writing a lot of points in a Word file properly. One year goal, two year goals, five year goals. And I forgot about that file totally. After two years, when I revisited that file, I noticed that 40% of the one year goals had not been met. So I have always been in a habit of, you know, writing, evaluating what went well in the last month or quarter, especially in a month if I'm not very happy with my output, I would always reflect back as to what went wrong, but that would be more of scribbling. It was relatively unstructured kind of writing. And when I came across this file two years later and I realized that there has to be a certain amount of accountability. I did not even remember that these were the goals I was looking at or these were the tasks I was looking at accomplishing in that year. And I always like to have a very macro view of things, a very uh, wider perspective on things. I have always respected time a lot, uh, even since college. And I've always evaluated as to, you know, where am I saving time? Where am I losing time? Where is my productivity low? So I've always done that, but in a very unstructured manner. And uh, also I was going through this book, uh, Tools of Titans, and uh, I have read through multiple books over these years. And combining all of that, I came up with this Invest in Yourself journal, which I want my students to use. And for myself as well, I'm really looking forward to writing there. So first of all, you need a certain level of accountability. So say, suppose I have certain goals for this year. At the end of the year, I want to go back and check what were the goals this year? How many have I been able to achieve and how many I was not able to achieve? So there is a certain level of accountability that is needed. So for example, I'll give you a stock market example. Suppose I have evaluated that these 10 stocks are going to do very well, right? Now what happens is if two stocks out of those 10 stocks do well, I'm immediately going to think that, see, I had thought about those two stocks and I was so correct. I wish I had invested in those two, but the remaining eight, what has happened? You have no accountability. Similarly, with respect to our goals, our aspirations, we need to write things down so that later on we can come back and there is absolutely no bias in terms of our thinking. Accountability is very important to know what we had forecasted or what, what we had targeted and to actually see what we have achieved without any bias. Having an understanding of the targets versus the outcome and then to analyze and understand why I was not able to meet all the goals. What were the roadblocks? What were the challenges and how can I make sure that next year that does not happen or next month that does not happen? We need to introspect in order to declutter our mind and to have a very organized thought process. For example, I love this page, the human portfolio. So basically what we do is in this page, we're going to be putting down the people that we spend the most amount of time with. And we need to understand that what characteristics or attributes that we want to absorb in our life from these people and what we do not want. Because you will be the sum total of the people you surround yourself with, the books you read and the content you consume. So you have to be very careful about it. I'm not saying that I would not want to be friends with an XYZ. But at the same time, I would want to make sure that I am absorbing the good qualities and not the bad qualities from that person. So somebody might be really great at, let's say, for example, reading or personal finances. I would want to learn that aspect, but I may not want to learn certain addictive habits that they might have. So you have to be very clear what are the takeaways. And you know what happens is that later on you steer conversation when you're having a conversation with that person, you steer conversation around those attributes that you want to absorb in your life. It is very important to understand this. What happens is people get very stressed about the outcomes. The point of this journal is to have your inputs in place. So how is my thought process working? How are my inputs working? How is my routine like on a daily basis and how I can improve that? So you work totally on your inputs and automatically your outcomes are going to happen but you have to focus on your inputs part. So when you're looking at the learnings part, people often do not have a very clear understanding of their finances, of their income, savings, expenses. They do not sit down and analyze as to what expenses can be increased or decreased. I'm not talking about taking down a daily expense or something, not at all. I'm looking at at the end of the year, what is the amount I spent on traveling? What is the amount I spent on shopping, let's say, luxury products, let's say, and the regular rental, etc., day-to-day expenses. So very broader view of things. Minutely managing 100 rupees, 200 rupees is not what I'm looking at, but having a good broad view of all these things and investments and then the asset allocation. What is the percentage of investment I have in equity? So understanding those things becomes very important to have that in writing, to think introspect that is required. So we've been working on this journal for about two months and me and my team. So we've been taking inputs, etc. but predominantly about the number of books I've read and you know, how I try to analyze my previous month, then try to work on the next month or so putting all of that together. So many books and so many experiences together, a 300 page journal. 
and I am a little fond of stationery. This is a hard bound colored pages we've used. I did not even know till until now that there are 80 GSM and all that, what kind of page and all of that. In fact, my student is the one who's uh, taking care of the entire printing. So I'm really happy about that too. One of my closest students and older students, it's across four sections. You've got introspection, you've got your goals, you've got your learnings and you've got your planner. And then each of those sections are across multiple sections. So total around 40, 45 subheadings or so. How you need to use this journal is you're not supposed to be sitting with it on a daily basis. Maybe you spend one, one and a half hours maximum per week for the first few months. Then you are kind of, you know, your understanding, you have better clarity about your thought process and everything. Then in the next few months, maybe you're doing one hour every week. And then after that, so that's about seven, eight months later, you're barely spending one hour per two weeks. And if you want one hour per month is also fine. But I personally would want to sit with few pages, one hour on every Two week basis and the first few months is going to be a build up because you're introspecting you're trying to understand your thought process you're trying to really answer important questions about your life so the first few months you're going to be using it a little more frequently but i would not advise you to use more than one hour at a go use different color pens you write the headings with blue write your thoughts with a black pen there are certain things you might want to write with a pencil so that you can erase and you can always keep updating you're going to be using the same journal for three years so after three years you move to the next one Right. So you need to get in the habit of this writing, this introspection to declutter your mind and to organize your thoughts and align your goals and your EQ and your skill set, etc. Everything together in order to achieve those.